Amen. Amen. All right. So this month, we've been going through the series of spiritual warfare or prayer or, you know, using our weapons. And this is very vital for us Christians. Kasi, again, we are living not just in a natural realm, but also we have the spiritual realm. In that spiritual realm, we have enemies. We have you know, the attacks of the enemy, and hindi siya, walang kristyanong hindi dadaan sa pagsubok or sa pagtest. So kaya mahalaga na as Christians, we know our weapons. We know our standing in God. And we, ha- we, we want you to know what the Word of God says and how we can fight that battle, how we can fight the enemy. Sino dito, you want to know that. Amen. Thank you for those hands that were raised. So let's open our Bibles, Ephesians 6, Ephesians chapter 6, verse, verse 10. Paul says, a final word, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on all of God's armor so that you will be able to stand firm against all strategies of the devil. For we are not fighting against flesh and blood enemies, but against evil rulers and authorities of the unseen world, against mighty powers in this dark world, and against evil spirits in the heavenly places. Therefore, put on every piece of God's armor so you will be able to resist the enemy in the time of evil then after the battle you will you will still be standing firm stand your ground putting on the belt of truth and the body armor of God's righteousness for shoes put on the peace that comes from the good news so that you'll be fully prepared in addition to all of these hold up the shield of faith to stop the fiery arrows of the devil put on salvation as your helmet take the sword of the spirit which is the word of god Pray in the Spirit at all times and on every occasion. Stay alert and be persistent in your prayers for all believers everywhere. So this is Paul. This is his final word. This is yung panghuli niyang uh, letter. And he's saying, finally, brethren, this is what you should do. So in the previous uh, books that he has written... Paul has written about the love of God. He has written about, you know, our righteousness in Christ Jesus. He has written, you know, our identity. He has talked about what Christ has done on the cross and what is our identity with him. And now he is saying, finally, this is what you should do. He is reminding us that we have an enemy and that we do not battle against flesh and blood naturally but we are we battle in the spiritual realm and we do that by we stand our ground by putting on the full armor so we are on us in a spiritual war that can only be won with spiritual resources we are on a spiritual war and it can only be won by spiritual resources and we have to know these spiritual resources and we have to use them. And Paul talks about it. He lists it down. He lists it down. And it, it's the full armor of God. It starts with the belt of truth. So kung noonang panahon, the, you know, the Israelites, they see Roman soldiers everywhere. Kasi by, nung time na yun, Israel was um, overpowered by Rome. So the Roman soldiers, you can see them walking around. And Paul describes or he examples it as the yung armor na sinusuot ng mga Roman soldiers. And in the old days, the soldiers first 
put on, pinakauna nilang nilalagay, sinusuot, ay yung belt. So the belt was a thick leather, thick leather strap girded around his waist with metal stripes hanging down. So this belt holds everything together. And Paul starts with saying, put on the belt of truth. So before anything else, you have to know truth. Why does Paul say now you have to put on the belt of truth? Well, again, we have to remind ourselves, we have to remember who our enemy is. And our enemy, his strategy, his ways, his number one tool is lies, deception. So ang kabaliktaran ng truth ay lie or deception. So the very first thing as a Christian, as a believer that you have to know and you have to put on, you have to put to practice is the truth of the Word of God. Sino dito nagbabasa ng Bible? Praise the Lord sa sampo. So yung iba sa inyo, most likely, you listen to the lies. Hello? <laughs> Again? Sino dito nagbabasa ng Bible? Ayan. Praise the Lord. So, ibig sabihin, when we, when we put the truth of God, we, we put on, we know the Word of God. When we are a man and a woman who is committed to the truth and the Word of God, that puts us in a good position. The belt holds everything together dun sa armor so without the belt nothing would be in place for a very long time everything hangs on the belt so truth is foundational sabi mo sa tabi mo truth is foundational so ibig sabihin you have to know what the word of god what the Word of God says about your salvation, what the Word of God says about, you know, being cleansed from your sins, what the Word of God says about, you know, mga issues of life. Our, yung standard ng Word of God, dapat yun ang ating standard. We do not, hindi tayo nakikinig sa standard ng mundo or sa standard ng sarili natin, but we put the Word of God as our standard. Ibig sabihin yun yung ating sinusunod. It doesn't matter what other opinion says or what other people say. You look to the Word of God as your number one. Siya yung mag-show sa'yo ng what is true and what is not. So how can we know the truth? Again, it's through the Word of God. Romans 12 Verse 1 to 2. And so, dear brothers and sisters, I plead with you to give your bodies to God because of all He has done for you. Let them be living, be a living and holy sacrifice, the kind He will find acceptable. This is truly the way to worship Him. Verse 2. Don't copy the behavior and customs of this world, but let God transform you, in you in an, into a new person by changing the way you think. Then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good and pleasing and perfect. Again, the enemy comes to you with lies or he comes to you to try to deceive you. Actually, sabi sa 2 Chronicles 11.14, Satan disguises himself as an angel of light. So the enemy, Satan doesn't come to you with a fork and a red suit with horns. No. He comes to you as, you know, oh, I am good. This is good for you. That's how he deceives. That's how he lies. But the Word of God says, para hindi ka ma-deceive, para hindi ka ma-trap dun sa line ng enemy, para alam mo kung paano mo i-distinguish yung, yung 
trap ng enemy sa gusto ng God, sabing ganun sa Romans, is that we transform, our minds are transformed, our hearts are transformed by the renewing of our mind through the Word of God. By this, by knowing the Word of God, then you will know His good and perfect will. You want to know His will for your life? You want to know what is His direction for you? You have to know the truth of the Word of God. You have to have a, a standard that is outside of yourself to know or to determine whether you are being deceived. And that standard is the Word of God. What does the Word of God say? So that's number one, the belt of truth. Second is the breastplate of righteousness. In the old times, yung breastplate na sinusuot ng mga Roman soldiers, it covers the shoulders and the sides of the chest, and it is the most beautiful part of the armor because it's bronze or iron, and it's heavy. It's about 40 pounds or more. But this protection is provided over the heart and vital organs, which is worth its weight. So, malaki siya, yung breastplate. It's covered, it's made of bronze or iron, and it's heavy. Pero it's worth it. Kasi it covers the most important parts. Diba? Sa isang, sa isang labanan, mahalaga na you know how to cover yung mga parts ng katawan mo na Madaling pag, you know, natusok ka doon or nasaksak ka doon, pwedeng immediately, di ba, mamatay ka na. So, as a believer, we need to put on the breastplate of righteousness. Righteousness is the right side of living. It is living your life in alignment to the will of God, to the word of God. You live a life that is right before God. Ibig sabihin, you live a life na, na, na pleasing sa Kanya. Ano ba yung pleasing sa Kanya? Ibig sabihin, you live a life katulad ni Christ. You love. You, you speak what is true. You are, you know, a man, a woman of peace. You, what you do, what you say, your actions speaks about truth, about God. This is righteousness. And righteousness, living a life that is right before God, invites the favor of God, the blessing of God, and the protection of God. Ulitin ko. Righteousness, living a life that is righteous, ibig sabihin, tama yung pam pamalakad ng buhay mo before God. Pag tumayo ka ngayon before God, alam mo na walang anything in your life na hindi, hindi gusto ni God. So righteousness invites the favor of God, the blessing of God, and the protection of God. Who wants that? We all want that. But we have to live a life that is righteous. Unrighteousness is the other way. It invites the devil in your life. So... If, if you assess your life now and you feel like, you know, wow, ang daming nangyari, ang daming masamang nangyari, bakit ganun parang sunod-sunod yung atake? Maybe, maybe the reason is your life, you're living a life that is not right before God. There's no blessing, there's no covering, there's no protection, there's no, there's no favor in your life. So you're wide open for the enemy to attack you. So we have to live a life that is righteous. If we have no breastplate on, the breastplate of righteousness on, there's no protection sa ating puso, sa ating spiritual hearts. 
Paul instructs that the righteousness we have in Christ is like the soldier's breastplate. It covers and protects the most vital parts of who we are. Our hearts, in the Word of God, often talks about our very core being. So our core being means our thoughts, our emotions, our function as an individual, our convictions, our will. So all these things, with the breastplate of righteousness, it covers it, it protects it. And you know, Satan seeks to attack you to the core. Because once that he, he has your, his arrow on your heart, on your mind, on your will, on your convictions, then it's easy for him for you to be swayed. Madali ka niyang, you know, ma- madala. O dito, dito. So as a believer, dapat araw-araw, you know, again, we're not perfect. I'm not perfect. You know, there are times that we sin, we fail. Living, pag sinabing living unrighteously, ibig sabihin, that means you have, yung heart mo is, ang desire niya is not to please God. But ang desire niya is to please yourself. That's unrighteous living. Pero, righteous living is saying, God, I want to please you all the time. I want to honor you. I want to love you. I want you to be glorified. Gusto ko yung, gusto mo yung mangyari. And if your heart is that, then your heart is right before God. And sometimes, you fail. Sometimes we sin. Sometimes we make mistakes. That doesn't mean you're unrighteous. It just means that you have to go down to your knees, ask for forgiveness, repent of your sins. What I'm talking about unrighteousness is you are you know, blatantly disobeying. Hindi ka, you know, it's, it's in your heart na mamaya mag, I'll do something wrong. So Satan seeks to assault us at, at our core. He wants to corrupt our identity, who we, who we, we are in Christ, and who Christ is. Pero, I have good news for you. Our righteousness is not based on our works. Ulitin ko, our righteousness is not based on our works. It is based on what Christ Jesus has done on the cross 2,000 years ago. And it says in 2 Corinthians... 5.21 5.21 that I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. I have righteousness through Christ Jesus. You have to put your faith, your trust in the finished work of the cross. Tinanggal niya na. When we accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, He took out the old nature and put in His nature. He took out our sins, He washed it clean, and now He placed His righteousness. Dati, we are wearing clothes. Uh, tayo ay covered with sin, but now we are covered with His blood and His righteousness. So we are to protect our hearts, our core, our mind, our will, our emotions by living a life that is pleasing to God. Number three is the shoes of peace or the sandals of peace. This sandal, yung description niya is the soldier's fit. Feet were outfitted with sandals made up of thick leather, thick leather sole, and various straps that wrap up to his ankles. So, kung 
yung gladiator sandals or shoes, parang ganun siya. Hanggang dito yung straps, and then le leather sole. But yung sole niya, bits of rocks were embedded as cleats into the soles for better traction. The shoes served a very important purpose to keep the soldier well planted while marching or standing in unstable soil. So yung, yung soles ng, ng shoes niya ay may mga rocks so that pag nandun siya sa place na hindi patag, hindi siya dudulas, you know, may kapit. So Paul instructed us to outfit our feet with shoes of peace. This shoes of peace provides us with the ability to face rough or unknown situations knowing that we won't slip from our positions. It is important to understand that peace is not an absence of of problems or tough times, peace is a person. And his name is Jesus. John 16, 33, I have told you all this so that you may have peace in me. This is Jesus speaking. Here on earth, you will have many trials and sorrows, but take heart because I have overcome the world. So peace is found in Jesus. It's not found in our circumstances, it's found in Him. That's why lagi tayong in exhort, lagi tayong in encourage. Keep your heart on God. Don't fix your eyes sa problem. Wag mong, wag kang masyadong mag focus dun sa circumstance mo. Mag focus ka. Sa God mo. In Christ, we have peace. He is the Prince of Peace. And not only that we are to have peace with God and know that He is peace, but I believe we are to have peace with others. Kasi mahirap lumaban nang meron kang kinikerry na sama ng loob. Mahirap lumaban sa isang battle na meron kang, alam mo yun, imbes na ang tahimik na ng mundo mo dahil may sama ka ng loob sa isang tao, yun pa yung gumugulo sa araw mo. Hello? Offense, bitterness, unforgiveness takes away our peace. Matthew 6, 14 to 15. If you forgive others the wrongs they have done to you, your Father in heaven will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others, then your Father will not forgive the wrongs you have done. So sometimes, because... Kaya ka walang peace dahil hindi ka pa nagpapatawad. And sabing ganun, kung hindi ka pa nagpapatawad, wala ka ding peace with God. Hindi ka papatawarin ni God. Hello? Para makalaban ka ng tama, para you know, to, to use your weapons, to be able to fight the enemy, you have to learn how to be at peace with God and peace with others. It can be your family member, co-worker, your friend, your classmate. Peace is what keeps you steady-minded. It keeps you clear-minded. You want to be able to think right. You want to be able to act right then you have to have that peace in your heart with God and peace in your heart with others. Number four, a shield of faith. So in description ng shield of faith sa isang Roman soldier, 
It was a big, big size, four feet tall and two and a half feet wide, put together by pieces of curved wood. It is designed to protect the soldier's entire body from danger that might accost him from any direction. So it is big. Hindi lang malaki yung kanyang breastplate, malaki din yung kanyang shield. Likewise, in a in an attack, you know, the enemy can come different ways. He can he can attack you in different ways. It, he can attack you through temptations, he can attack you through other people, he can attack you through circumstances. And having the shield of faith, that big, big covering, you will be able to quench or ma masanga yung attacks ng enemy. So, what is the shield of faith? Again, Hebrews eleven one, sabi ngano now faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. You have to remind yourself of God's promises. You have to know His truth. You have to remember God's goodness so that you will have that confidence that God is with you, God is for you. And God, God has your back. Matthew 22, verse 21. Matthew twenty-two twenty-one. 21. And Jesus answered and said to them, Truly I say to you, if you have faith and do not doubt, you will not only do what was done to the fig tree, but even if you say to this mountain, be taken up and cast into the sea, it will happen. And all and all things you ask in prayer, believing you will receive. So faith is that trust, that belief that God heard your prayer and the answer is on its way. It's unwavering. Ibig sabihin, hindi ka yung pabago-bago. Ay, sagutin ba ni Lord? Ay, siguro, ay, ayan na, ay, wala pa. It's unwavering. Mark eleven twenty three. Truly I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, be taken up and cast into the sea, and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that what he says is going to happen, it will be granted him. Therefore I say to you, all things for which you pray and ask, believe that you have received them, and they will be granted to you. So f- faith. When the enemy comes and says, there's no, not going to be any provision, you put that faith, that shield faith up and say, my God shall supply all my needs. I know that. He says that in his word. Sabi niya, I should not worry. He feeds the birds of the air, so he will feed me too. Hello? Believe and trust his word. And number five, the fifth element is yung helmet of salvation. Helmet of salvation. The soldier's helmet was a single piece of iron molded to fit his head and adorned with a peacock-like crest to identify his rank. Like today, head wounds in ancient times were the most common and fatal wounds of war. The soldier wouldn't dare enter battle without his helmet. Hanggang ngayon, di ba, yung mga soldier natin, may helmet din sila. Spiritually speaking, our heads represent what's in them, our minds. And we know that the mind is the devil's playground or it's the battlefield. Most of the time, it comes through your mind first and then... The more that you think about it, the more that you meditate on it, it goes to your heart and it becomes truth. So the enemy, that's what he targets, is yung thought process mo, yung iniisip mo. 
Akala mo, isip mo lang yun, pero ang totoo, disiplinant yun ng enemy. And dahil kakaisip mo, kaka-meditate mo, ba, totoo nga siguro yun na ganun nga, you know, lagi na lang akong kawawa or, you know, hindi ako mag-succeed sa aking buhay. Hindi ako mahal ni God. The more that you think about it, the more that it gets down to your heart at eventually, yun na yung standard mo. Yun na yung truth. At dahil doon, na-deceive ka na at That's the that's the plan of the enemies that we do not live a victorious life. He wants to steal from he wants to steal from us. Second Corinthians 10. Second Corinthians chapter 10 verse 4 to 5. It says We use God's mighty weapons, not worldly weapons, to knock down the strongholds of human reasoning and to destroy false arguments. We destroy every proud obstacle that keeps people from knowing God. We capture their rebellious thoughts and teach them to obey Christ. This talks about our minds, that we take down yung strongholds, yung mga mga things na nilagay ng enemy sa mind natin, we learn to overcome them through the Word of God, through the weapons of the Word of God. We let it, we teach it to obey Christ. Pag sinasabi ng isip mo na, hindi, hindi ka righteous, hindi ka holy, makasalanan ka, then you take out the Word of God and you teach your mind to obey. The Word of God says, if I confess my sins, He is faithful and just to forgive me. I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. You take that Word and you make your mind believe, you you pull down, you destroy yung mga wrong mindsets na yun. Because that is the key. And number six is the sword of the Spirit. The sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. So the sword of, this, the sword of a Roman soldier, a weapon, is both for defensive and offensive use. And the Word of God is the same. We, we use the Word of God as weapon when we speak it. Speaking Scripture out loud raises a spiritual sword in the air that alerts Satan that you are armed and dangerous. Ito yung key. You have to speak the Word of God. Hindi pwede na inisim mo lang. You have to open up your mouth and declare it. You have to let the enemy hear it. Because when the enemy hears it, that's when he runs, not when you think about it. You have to open up your mouth, open the Word of God, read it out loud, and declare it sa face ng enemy. And with that, the enemy will flee. The enemy will run. You know, the same with when we worship God. You can't just worship God Just with your mind. I worship you, Lord. No, you have to speak it. You have to declare it. Our praise is a weapon, di ba? You have to open up your mouth and declare. The same is the sword of the Spirit. The Word of God is Hebrews 4.12, it says. Hebrews 4.12 For the word of God is living and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the division of soul and spirit and of joints and marrow, and is a discerner of thoughts and intents of the heart. The word of God will tell you where to go. This is your truth. This is how you should walk or this is how, where you should go. The Word of God is powerful. Isaiah 55, 11 says, 
So shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. It shall not return to me void, but it shall accomplish what I please, and it shall prosper in the thing for which I sent it. So when the word of God says that you are more than conqueror through Christ Jesus, the word of God is, sabi ng ganun, it will not return to God void. Ibig sabihin, hindi siya babalik na walang nangyari. Once that you speak it out, once that you open up your mouth, it will accomplish what it needs to accomplish. The word of God is living and active. Hindi lang siya paper at words, kundi may power siya. That's why you should open up your Bibles every day. Read the Word of God every day. If you can read it out loud, read it out loud. Jeremiah 23.29 is not my word like fire, says the Lord, and like a hammer that breaks the rock in pieces? John 6, 63. It is the Spirit who gives life. The flesh profits nothing. The word that I speak to you are spirit, and they are life. When you speak the word of God, you are speaking life into a situation. When there's sickness in a body and you speak the word of God and you say, by Jesus' stripes you are healed, then you are speaking life to that. That's how powerful the word of God is. So you have to, you have to use the sword of the Spirit. Isaiah 40, verse 8. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of God stands forever. It doesn't change. Your circumstance might change. You know, things in life might change, but the word of God will never change. The word of God stands true. It is our standard, our foundation. But you know, the, when Paul talked about the full armor of God, there was another piece na sinabi niya. He's, so, the armor, the sword of the Spirit, but then in verse 18, sabi niya, Ephesians 6, 18, sabi, Pray in the Spirit at all times and on every Occasion. I believe this is one more key to winning a battle, to living a life that is victorious. Pray in the Spirit at all times and in every occasion. Stay alert and be persistent in your prayers for all believers everywhere. Pray. You have to I believe na our prayer should not just be sa isip, but prayer should also be heard. When we open up our mouth, there's power. Life and death are in the power of the tongue. So when we pray, we are speaking life. And when we pray, it is like a key that unlocks heaven. Prayer unlocks heaven. Prayer allows us to access what God already has for us. Sabe, you do not have because you do not ask. You want to have it. You want to have that victory. You want to have that healing. You want to have that provision. You have to open up your mouth. You have to pray. You have to ask. You have to come before God. If you want to live a victorious life, then you have to pray. Hindi, there's no way around it. 
So in closing, let's put on the full armor of God and let's pray without ceasing. And if you, you look at the full, the, the full armor of God, if you can sum it up, it's, it's knowing the word of God, meditating on it, putting it to practice, using it, speaking it, declaring it, doing it, acting on it. And it's also communication with God, opening up your mouth in prayer, lifting up your voice, humbling yourself before God. So this is how we fight our battles. This is how we win. This is how we can stand firm. We stand firm through knowing that, again, we have an enemy and we stand firm through putting on the full armor of God and prayer. Amen? Can we all stand? And let's close in a word of prayer. Lord, we thank you today for the things that you're teaching us, you're reminding us, we ask, Lord, that you would stir up our hearts, Lord, that we will always be on guard, that we would be able to know, Lord, the, the schemes of the enemy. We won't be trapped, we won't be deceived by the lies of the enemy, but that we would always be able to discern the things of you, O God, through your word, by renewing our minds, by put by living a life that is righteous before you, by being being at peace with you and with others, O God. Lord, by, by walking, Lord, in alignment with your word, by declaring your word, by praying, God, I ask tonight in Jesus' name that you would stir up the hearts of your people. God, salamat that you have, Lord, prepared for us, God, great things, but we need to fight for it. We need to stand our ground, and we need to do declare your word in Jesus name so I thank you Lord that your people are victorious you've already given us Lord God our weapons you've already given us Lord the things we need so that we could be victorious so I thank you Lord God faith rising up in the hearts of your people to believe you God for that situation to believe you God for that breakthrough in Jesus name Lord salamat Pangino. we will not be silent we will not Lord hold back in Jesus name but we will be people God who is active who is Lord God persistent God who will who will not give up in Jesus name but Lord that we will be people who will stand on your word God and in prayer Lord God for the things Lord that, that you place in our hearts God I speak your blessing and your favor God upon your people I thank you for that breakthrough in their lives and we glorify you for what you're doing in Jesus name we pray amen and amen God bless you